his great presentation uh, this morning about the psychology of trading. And I'll tell you, I, I spent a couple years on the CME as well, and the pit that he worked in, I tell you, was, was crazy. It looks like some of the pictures are there on, on the left of, uh, of my screen. Um, so good morning, everybody. We do have the market starting to open or will open in about 12 minutes. What I'm going to do, um, what I want to do this morning is talk about adjusting calendars. Okay? I, I just recently did a webinar, and we talked about using calendars as uh, an income trade using the options. Okay? And I'm going to assume some sort of option knowledge. Okay? I'm going to assume you kind of understand what a calendar is. We'll go through a review, but then what we're going to do is look at major, three major keys to adjusting a calendar, and by that time the market will be open, and we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at a calendar that uh, we're watching an options buzz. Okay? A calendar we started about a week ago, and it's going to need adjusting. So um, we'll kind of put theory into practice, okay? Let me just uh, remind everybody, first of all, that this webinar is offered for informational and educational purposes only. Just get the legal stuff out of the way. Um, I'm not giving you any sort of trading advice or investment advice. If you do pull the trigger on a trade using Real Money Guys, please talk to your broker beforehand because options involve risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Okay. Now, I'm going to uh, do the best I can to, to take uh, some of the questions as we go. But I don't want to get uh, you know kind of off point, so you're welcome to, to to bring up your question. I'll do my best to answer it. If not, we'll try to get it at the other end of the uh, of the webinar. Uh, for those who who don't know me, and uh, we've got a great crowd here from around the world. Um, my name uh, Greg Lear. I was uh, first introduced into uh, trading uh, options trading way back in 1990, and I. I had no clue how the trading world worked, but I actually got hired by one of the most um, impressive derivatives trading firms in the world. It's called Susquehanna International Group, and I know Rich um, certainly would know who they are. They're not quite as well well known as uh, Goldman Sachs, for instance, but it's because they're publicly held. They're keeping all the billions to themselves. So they gave me just a fantastic education in the way um, options work. And in fact, I started on the CME training in foreign currency futures options. So actually a derivative on a derivative can get very complicated. But then they moved me over to the uh, Chicago Board Options Exchange when they were ready to put me on a seat and uh, let me start trading the, the, the firm capital. And uh, I spent several years with them learning literally from some of the brightest minds in the options in the options world. Um, I also co-founded a, a firm called Third Millennium Trading, and uh, I spent a total of nine years on the Chicago Board Options Exchange as a market maker, and I spent about a year and a half, two years on the CME prior to that, um, learning the craft. Um, I've been teaching options for about a decade now. And uh, sh you know, showing other people how the options work, and say, hey, here's what a good setup looks like. Here's here's an option setup that I wouldn't um, you know think would be something that's tradable. Okay. The great thing about teaching for as long, well, you know, 20 years of of being in the market, 30 years of being in the market, 10 years of teaching it now, going on 15 years now, is I know how people learn. I know how many of you think when it comes to options. And frankly, the way I look at them is, uh, is quite different. Okay? Uh, but I love teaching. Those that have uh, been in my webinars know that I just I love to go on and on about this. Okay? Sophie. Um, so I, I love to pass on a lot of the stuff that I know. And some of the recent trades that we've been finding in options buzz um, are listed here. These are over the last probably three weeks, and what you'll see is, uh, you know, winners, losers. Sometimes you look at a trade like Ellen uh, LinkedIn there or Priceline PCLN. Don't uh, you know we we decided not to trade, which is a perfectly valid uh, trading decision. Okay, you got to look for the setups that make the most 
uh, the most sense. The, uh, the price line trade, this was, we were looking at price line going into earnings, okay? And you can trade a lot of different things going into an earnings event. You just have to be careful of, you know, the, the inevitable drop in the volatility. You have to take a look at, you know, how the options are setting up. The thing about price line is that we went back the next day, and if you traded um, a strategy thinking the stock wouldn't move much, you lost. And if you traded a strategy thinking the stock would move a lot, you also lost. And you know that's why I'm glad we stayed out of it because sometimes the setups just aren't there. Okay, so now uh, kind, of, kind of the ground rules. Okay, like I said, I did a, a webinar about a month ago, and we talked about um, credit spreads. Okay. And if you weren't in that webinar, you're just going to have to accept this fact, okay? Because we're not going to spend the entire morning rehashing what I've already done, okay? You have to accept the fact that if you sell a credit spread, you're not putting money into your account, okay? You sell the spread. It, it's, it's named a credit spread, but it's not really putting money in your account, okay? And that's all I'm, that's all I'm going to say about it, okay, guys? Um, because, again, we're not going to reinvent the wheel here or rehash what we've done. But we're going to build upon this idea of uh, looking at income trades. Okay. In fact, here's our here's today's agenda. We'll we'll go through a quick review of calendars and income trading. Okay. And you can use all sorts of strategies as as income trades. Okay. We're going to look at the hidden risk of credit spreads. Okay. There's nothing wrong with the credit spread. Let me put it out there. Nothing wrong with a credit spread. There's nothing wrong with any particular strategy. We're just going to look at the hidden risk that a lot of people don't really see. Okay? And then we're going to talk about three keys to adjusting a calendar. And, uh, uh, you know, and then we'll go take a look at the live market and see where, uh, where things are kind of shaking out today. So part one, part two, these are both going to be kind of review. Um, I'm probably going to go through these slides somewhat fast. Okay, so if, you, if you're not getting everything, don't worry. Okay, uh, Morgan, like you said, he's recording this. You can go back over it, but uh, we want to get to the, to the meat of the, of the presentation, which is the three keys to adjusting these calendars. Okay, number one, review. Um, let me just get a, a, quick look, uh, a quick poll here. How many of you um, currently trade um, options or you trade calendar spreads in, in particular. Just, you know, throw a little something out into the, the chat box so I kind of have an idea of, uh, of where you guys are. All right, so a lot of yeses, a lot of noes. Okay, great. Great mixed crowd, okay? Um, if you don't trade options and if you don't understand calendars, uh, again, don't worry about it. Just understand that there there are better ways of going about the process, right? Okay, there are better, and, and it's, it's what I kind of call the efficiency of trading. It's like finding the best trade given the situation. And the reason why is, as a retail trader, a lot of a lot of retail traders are just happy to when they win, right? And they make money, and they're like, yay, I'm making money. That's not the way you should go about it. When you're right, you should make all the money, okay? Maximize your, your winnings when you are right, because then that helps pay for, you know, a lot of the times that you're wrong. So just keep that in mind. There's an efficient way of, there's a better way of going about things a lot of times. So when we talk, when I say income strategy, most people are going to think credit spreads, selling puts, selling put spreads, okay? Or perhaps an iron condor or an iron butterfly. And the reason is that these trades are all considered to be credit trades. And it sounds like, a, you know, it sounds like you're making income, okay? You're not, you're not making income until you close the trade with a profit. That's what it comes down to, okay? I think people are really more... Um, brought to these types of trades because they're higher probability, or they can be set up as a higher probability trade. Higher probability does not mean guaranteed, 
right? I know, I know some of you who are trading the options have found that out, okay? In reality, we can use any type of option trade as income. We can, look at, we can buy spreads, we can buy condors, we can buy butterflies, and, and, and they can work just as well as generating income. Um, we can look at broken wing butterflies. We can look at unbalanced. There's so many different trades that can be used as income. We can make high probability trades. We can make higher return types of trades. One thing that a lot of people might find a little bit more straightforward than some of these things is a calendar. Okay, calendars are um, just uh, two-part trades. Okay, that uh, basically try to make money the same way that you try to make money with options when you sell a put spread. Okay, and I'll explain that here in just a second. Uh, question about explaining condors and butterflies. I, I can't in this time frame. It's just too much information. Um, but you can certainly go to the Options Buzz website and go to MarketFi. There's a lot of, of good free information that will help explain those things. Now, buying a calendar, two-part trade, just like, a, just like if you sold a put spread, right? you got two legs to it. Here, I'm going to buy a longer-term option, and I'm going to sell a shorter-term option. Again, this is review. I'm going to kind of blow through this, so don't try to scribble everything down. Again, you can come back and... Uh, Morgan has the, uh, uh, the recording for you guys later. All right, so buying the longer term option, selling the short, shorter term option. Uh, we're gonna use the same strike, and if you're gonna trade calls, you trade calls versus calls. Buy a call, sell a call. You can buy a put, sell a put, okay? You put it together this way, and you bought yourself a calendar. Now, how does this calendar make money? The same way a credit spread makes money. By having that short option, the option that you sold, that's how you're trying to make money. And when that option drops in value, presumably from time decay or maybe some movement, that's how you're making money. You're only buying that other option for insurance. Okay? That's how a credit spread and a calendar act very similarly. You're just selling typically a put. Okay? Maybe it's a call but you're buying that other option only as protection, you're trying to make money from the option that you sold. Okay? When you put it all together, it, uh, you know, for the visual, here's what it looks like. There's the risk graph for a calendar that you bought. And you see that red line as it comes to a peak, that's expiration, that peak represents the strike of the calendar, that's where you make the most amount of money. Okay? So calendars can be a lot easier to handle than credit spreads can. Okay, I'll say that again. Calendars can be easier to handle than credit spreads. Uh, and if you've ever had a credit spread, if you've ever sold a put spread, and it went against you, you had the market tank, uh, or you had an iron condor and the market's just ripping in one direction, you know that those things can get ugly very quickly. Okay, so I'm not, again, I'm not saying credit spreads are bad. You just have to understand what's really going on when you trade a credit spread, not just one time, but if this is your week after week after week approach, um, things, are, things can start to get a little bit hairy. Okay, Gary's got a question about out of the money or at the money for calendars. You, you trade, the, you buy the, the, the trade, you trade the strike, well, you think the stock's going to be at expiration. There you go. It's a target trade. Where do I think the stock's going to be? Boom. Park your strike right there. You got room on the other side. Okay? If I look at a credit spread, however, okay, a credit spread is kind of like this iceberg, isn't it? Okay? There's a lot of risk that you, you may not see. So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to go through this, uh, this table here. And there's, uh, there's a lot of information, so I'll go through it kind of slowly. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to compare, you know, if I sell a five-point wide put spread, uh, put spread, if I sell a, a credit spread, typically, you know, most people are looking at selling put spreads, right? If I sell that credit spread for 75 cents and I sell it five times, that's my... 
um, that, that's my approach to, to creating some income. Okay. And the risk on the trade is going to be $2,125, right? Five spreads, um, 75 cent credit. Okay, you've got maximum risk of $2,125. Now, notice I, I got both of these trades listed as debit trades, and they are. Okay? Uh, both of these spreads are debit spreads because they're going to take money out of your account until the trade is closed. Okay? So that's why you have to start thinking a little bit outside the box. Okay? Now, here's the cool thing. All right? If you trade this calendar, and, and, and the way I have this particular calendar example set up, I'm selling the shorter term option, I'm buying a longer term option uh, three or four or five expirations out in time. And in here I'm looking at the weeklies. Okay? You're, you're trading like the SPX or something that has weeklies, and this gives you the ability to roll your short strike um, out to the next expiration every week. And we'll, again, we'll look at this in just a few minutes when we pull up the live market. Now, here's the big deal here. This is awesome. This is huge for trading. The risk of the calendar gets less every single week. Every single week you're in the trade, your risk goes down. Now, if you compare that to a credit spread, okay, look what's going on every week you trade you sell this, this credit spread. Okay? Week one, the spread goes out worthless. You, you keep your $375, but you put $2125 of, of risk into the market. Okay? Second week, you do the same thing. You're making $375, but you're again you're risking $2125. And you do it again, and you do it again. And then you get to that one week where the market doesn't cooperate, and I'm just taking the example here. If you lose the full amount of the of the risk, okay. I know how many of you guys have had something like this happen to you, okay. And then you go back to making money, but when you look at it, you've made a little bit of money, but the cumulative risk that you put on is is huge, okay. It's like somebody shooting a bullet at you every single week eventually all that risk is going to start to, to, to catch up to you. Okay, quick question here. Is a diagonal the same thing as a calendar? It's a directional kind of a calendar. Okay, now if we look at the, the calendar, every time you're able to make an adjustment and roll that short put or that short option, buy that short option to close, you sell the next uh, expiration option to open, you take in a credit. And you do that, and you do that, and eventually you get to the point where you're, you've not only reduced the risk in the trade, but you've potentially taken all of the risk out of the trade. And that's a beautiful place to be uh, with your calendar. So it's this adjustment that we're going to look at. Okay? Remember, you buy the longer term option, you sell the shorter term option, same strike. When the shorter term option um, starts to decay, when it starts to get, uh, you know, when we get closer to expiration, we need to buy that option to close, and then we can, if we choose to, adjust this thing, roll it out to the next expiration, all right? But, okay, here are three things to look for, okay? The first one is don't let your short option expire worthless. I know a lot of people think that's a cool thing or that's a great thing. It's like, ah, I sold this put and it went out worthless. Um, not, not a good idea. Okay? Sounds good in theory. I'll talk about why you could really be setting yourself up for some, uh, a huge problem. Okay? So don't let the short option expire worthless. And that kind of dovetails into number two, which is you want to learn to roll that short option at the right time. Okay, I know that sounds easy, right? Here's the rule. <laughs> Roll it at the right time. Well, when's the right time? We'll talk about it. Okay? I'll show you what to look for. It may, it may take you uh, some, some time to, to learn it. It's going to take some experience, but you can learn to roll at the right time. And I, I'll show you how big 
of a difference uh, these things can make uh, in your ability to make money trading calendars. Third thing, roll to the right expiration. Again, that sounds like it's pretty straightforward, okay? But there is so much information that you can glean from the option chains if you know what you're looking for, okay? You know, spent 20, I'm going on, what, 20 years now? 23 years? I don't know, I can't do my math anymore. Yeah, 23 years looking at option chains, okay? There's a lot of stuff you can learn from the option chain if you just know where to look, okay? So let's take the first one. And we're, don't let your short option expire worthless. In, in this example, let's just say we're, uh, we've got Apple up here. And just again, just as an example, let's say we're short, which means we've sold to open uh, the 440 or the 445 options there that I have um, in that blue box, OK? Um, Let's just say we're short either one. It doesn't matter where you sold it, okay? But l trying to let that 440 call uh, expire worthless, you, you were thinking to yourself, well, it's, it's, it's worth 36 cents right now. If I let it expire, I'm going to make another 36 cents. Well, right, that could be, okay? But there's things that you probably have not considered uh, when you're letting these expire worthless. And... With the, with the advent of all of these weekly expirations, you know, like Apple will have upwards of five weekly expirations, right? This week, next week, uh, third week from now, and so on. You could run into huge problems, and here's why. Stocks move after the market closes, okay? Another question here real quick. Are diagonals any better to use than regular calendars? There's... There's no such thing as one strategy is better than the other. It's just that one might fit your, uh, your you know, what the market gives you, right? Mathematically speaking, one's not better than the other. It all depends on how you manage it and, and what the market gives you, okay? And if we just look at this one simple idea is if, if Apple moves after hours, what a lot of people don't know is, um, you have an option that you think expired worthless, but because of the after hours movement in the market, the option holder might decide that they want to exercise this call or this put. And you're not going to know about it until Monday. Okay? So in this example, let's say you know we fast forward uh, a couple of hours to expiration and Apple closes right at 433.95, like it says on the screen there. The 440 calls are worthless, and they should go out worthless, and, and, you know, nothing should happen, right? But what if Apple moves after hours, okay? There's a window, and you have to check with your particular broker, but there's a window after the close that you can call your broker and say, look, I know these 440 calls expired out of the money, but I want to exercise them because I know now the stock's trading above 440, all right? And so what do you do? Sell the stock at 445 or whatever price it's at? Exercise your op option to buy them at 440? And the person who is short the option gets hit by a truck on Monday because they don't know what happened, right? They are, they're coming in short the stock. So after hours movement can cause somebody to... Um, uh, you can get assigned on options that you think were out of the money, and conversely, hey, you may not be assigned on something that's in the money because of this after-hour stock movement. Okay, so now a question from Greg is, uh, are we buying, selling in the money options? No, we're selling... We're, we're long the, the longer term option. We sold the shorter term option at the same strike, and now we're looking at rolling that short option out to the next expiration. Okay, so before we do that, 
uh, we want to take a look at you know not letting this shorter option uh, go uh, go down to zero. Okay. So here's a here's a rule of thumb for you. Okay. If the option gets down to five cents or less, just close it. Buy it to close, and depending on your broker, you may not have to pay a commission, or the commission that you pay might be lower. Okay. And the reason why is the broker wants to keep you in business. They don't want you having these short options out there that could potentially really move against you. Okay. Now this dovetails perfectly into number two. Okay. We're not going to let the short option expire worthless, and we're going to roll at the right time. Okay. We're going to roll out to the next um, expiration, and we're going to do it at the right time. How do you tell what the right time is? Okay. So here's another example. Okay, going back to Apple. Apple's trading, uh, you know, same price, 433.95, and we're going to say we're short this uh, 440 call. June 1. See where it says June 1, 13. June 1 stands for the first week of June. Okay, June 2. Down on the slide, that's the second week of June. Okay, and what we want to do is buy to close the June 1 option. Okay, and roll it out to the next expiration so that we can take in that credit, right? When we do that, we're going to take in a credit, and then uh, um, that's going to lower the risk of the trade. And that's going to you know make this adjustment for us. So let's take a look at when, when to make that roll. Okay, so we know it's not going to be right at expiration because we don't want we're not going to let that June. That, that first option go out worthless, right? Now, here's one thing where you, 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 no matter what options analysis or what broker you use, all platforms have inherent um, shortcomings. It's just the way it is. It's normal. It's natural. Okay? If I take a look at this June 440 call, okay, the theta says 57 cents. Well, we know that's not true. Right, the option's worth 36 cents. It can't decay 57 more cents. So the theta number is is calculated at the beginning of the trading day. Okay, so we know on expiration Friday, the theta number is worthless. You don't even look at it. Okay, but we know that if I if I hang on to the that short option, if it does go down to zero, I'm going to make 36 cents. But think about this. In the next in the next month or the next week here, okay. As we're going through expiration Friday and we're starting to move into the weekend, the option that expires next week is already decaying for for, for today, for Saturday, for Sunday, and starting into next week. So if you're waiting for the for the shorter term option to decay to zero, how much? theta are you giving up by not rolling out to the next week? You guys see what I mean? Okay, it's like I'm, I'm going to make 36 cents by, by keeping the short option in, in June 1, but then I'm probably going to miss 50, 60, or maybe even 70 cents of theta if I had rolled it out to the next week. Okay, so here's how you do this. All right, if, if you haven't taken a note, now's when you do it. Okay. Write this down. You watch the value of that calendar, okay? Because you're going to sell the June four, the June twos, the next week. You're going to sell those to open, right? To roll it out. You're going to buy the June ones to close, and you're going to do that as a short calendar trade. You use the short calendar uh, uh, order ticket to to make this adjustment. And when you do this, you're going to do it for a credit, right? because you're going to sell that more expensive option and what you do is you watch the value of that roll okay the roll is you know you close the one and you you open the other one that's all a roll is you're just moving an option from one place to another you watch the value of the roll when the roll starts to decrease that means you're going to start bringing in less and less money it means it's probably time to roll out okay Sean says do you sell at the bid use a limit order what you, what you do is you look at the value of the roll. What's the fair value? And most brokers will just bring it up. In fact, we'll look at that here in just a couple minutes. 
Look at the fair value of the roll. And in Apple, you're going to be able to roll or make that adjustment within probably five cents of the fair value. Okay? So you don't have to get all caught up in, you know, buying this ask and selling that bid. No, just look at the fair value of it. Um, and then you maybe give up five cents of, um, around fair value. Okay? Again, we'll look at a live example here. But uh, let's get through this last one here. Okay? So we, we know we're not going to just let the, the short option expire worthless. And two, we're going to look for the optimal time to roll it to the next expiration so that we can capture the greatest amount of time decay. All right? Now think about this, okay? You could, if you don't watch this roll appropriately, you could easily give up 10, 20, 30 cents or more depending on exactly what's going on. It's a huge amount, okay? If you even give up, let's say, let's say you miss out on 20 cents because you're not watching the roll. 10 contracts, that's what, $200, okay? $200 a week, that's like 10 grand a year, right? That's good math. Yeah, that, so that's, it's, it's huge money. I've seen so many traders, you know, come show me a trade and say, hey, what do you think of this? And I think, well, you left 200 bucks on the table, right? Here's what you could have done. So watching the roll is imperative. And then the third thing is also, it's, it, it seems pretty straightforward, but it's not. It's which expiration do I roll out to? Okay, like I said now with, with the advent of weeklies, you could, you could, you know, and depending on how you set up the calendar, right, depending on how much time you put in between the long option and the short option, you may have a lot of different expirations that you can roll forward to, okay? In this example, let's go back and uh, this is IBM. Okay, I just pulled this one out because it's a it's a great example of of uh, of this idea. Okay, let's say we're short this IBM uh, the June one two ten and this option's expiring. Okay, it's down to three cents. Okay, I'm going to buy that one to close, and then. I want to roll it out to the next week, right? That would be the typical adjustment, rolling out to the next week. So buying June 1 to close and then rolling it out to the next week, there's a problem. Okay? If I roll this out to the June 2 option, second week of June, and roll it out to the 210 strike, Okay, there's a problem here. Here's what it is. Okay, imagine we're on expiration Friday. I can, I can roll out one week to June 2, or I can roll out two weeks to regular June, third week of June. Okay, if you roll out one week, you've made the wrong decision. Okay, and that's, you know, that's the whole thing about being uh, trained as I was at Susquehanna, okay? Rich gave us a great look at the psychology of trading, okay? But if you're in the best psychological mood, but you're continually making the wrong decision, then it doesn't matter, right? Okay, you have to make the right decision given the information you have at that time, and then you let the chips fall where they may. You manage the trade and so on. Here, rolling out to the next month or the next week is the wrong decision. Why? Well, think about this, okay? Today is expiring. I can sell the one-week option or I can sell the two-week option. If I sell the one-week option, I'm going to collect 28 cents, okay? If I do that and then another week goes by, I then sell the next week option. I'm going to collect about another 28 cents. So, right? so think over the next two weeks with things the way they are, I'm going to collect 28 cents two times. Okay? Joe, forget, forget about commissions. Okay? I mean, you have to take them into account. But 
you know, commissions should cost you, uh, you know, like a buck a contract, something like that, okay? If I roll out to the second week, I'm going to collect 69 cents. See the difference? If I roll out one week, I collect 28 cents, and then I roll out another week, I collect another 28 cents. Over that two-week period, I'm collecting 56 cents. If I immediately roll out to the second week, I'm collecting 69 cents. There's a 13 cent difference, okay? And again, on, on 10 contracts, it's 130 bucks. That's like six grand a year. You guys see the difference here? This is huge. One simple thing um, that you uh, you can glean from this option chain. Okay, now Ted, Ted says, yeah, but you save a commission by going out to the two week option. All right, let me put it into dollar terms for you here, okay? You don't want to be, uh, what is it, penny wise and pound foolish, okay? If you pay um, a buck and a half a contract, okay, and that, if you're paying more than a buck and a half a contract, have a, have a talk with your broker, okay? You put that into a per share basis, okay? That's a cent and a half. So if I, if I roll two times, it's uh, three cents. If I roll once, it's one and a half cents. Okay, you're still giving away money by by looking to roll two weeks for the sheer sake of saving um, commissions. Now here it makes sense because of the theta. You don't roll out just because of the commission. Okay, so that's a that's a it looks very simple, but when you understand the the simplicity of this, you can see how important it really is. All right? I just got done doing a webinar about you know the big picture is made up of the little things, right? And everybody everybody wants to know you know how do I trade you know the six legged iron cockroach type of a trade or whatever. You know what? Forget about that. It's about mastering the basics and just understanding something like this. This is theta. This is time decay. Understanding time decay to this extent is going to put more money into your pocket, all right, than trying to figure out some some crazy, uh, you know, eight-legged strategy, okay? So um, three major keys to making more money with calendars, making money with calendars if you're just getting started. The first one is that you should not, ex you don't expect that you're going to let that short option expire worthless. Okay? Number two, you're going to use that knowledge and the knowledge of how much the next option is decaying to roll at the right time. Okay? The third thing is that you're going to look at what's really going on, how much data am I really collecting, and I'm going to pick the right expiration. Now, a lot of times it is going to be you go right to the next expiration, the nearest one but not always. Okay? It takes you two seconds to look and figure it out. Okay? All right, so now, I know you guys got lots of, que tons of questions, and I can appreciate that. Um, you know, I wish we had all data to go over this stuff, but let's do this. Let me take a break from the slides here. Okay? And let's go take a look at what's going on in the market. All right, so it looks like uh, SPX is up about eight bucks. Apple's unchanged. Let's just see here. Amazon's up. All right, VIX. Where's the VIX? Uh, VIX is down a buck. Okay, let's do this. Let's go take a look at a calendar, okay? And uh, this is the calendar on the SPX that uh, at Options Buzz we we put this into the model portfolio. Um, I don't know when I say a week ago or so. Um, I haven't done anything with it yet. Um, it's getting time though to uh, to roll this thing out. It's a put calendar. 
Okay, so here it is. Short the uh, the uh, August four. These are the options that expire. Uh, what is today? Thursday. They expire tomorrow. Okay, and then you know typically I would think I'm going to roll them out to this option, which is next week, right? End of August, 1660 puts. Now I've been watching this roll. Okay, going into uh, the Fed minutes uh, yesterday, market was down a little bit. This roll was going for about four and a half, maybe five bucks. I saw it get as high as six. Okay, so if I look at the roll right now, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. I know a lot of you guys like to look at um, risk graphs. Okay. Now keep in mind the risk graph. The risk graph is 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 not showing you the whole picture. Okay. The risk graph will lie to you. Okay. So let me just get the calendar up here. Oh, that's a thing of beauty. Look at that. Okay. So here's where we are right now. And uh, let's see, the initial trade price for this calendar was about, it says here, 15, it's about 15 bucks, something like that. 16, I think it was like $16, okay? So bought this calendar for $16 one week ago. And now it's getting, it's getting time to consider rolling it out. So, sorry guys, just trying to get this all so it's as readable as possible. So what do I need to do? I need to buy to close the August 4, and then I need to sell to open the August 5, which is one week out. Okay, and it says the, uh, the mid-market right now is $6.70. Okay. Okay, and yeah, if you're having trouble reading the screen, go up to the top of your um, of the Omnovia uh, window, and you can you can uh, make this a full screen thing for you. Okay, so I, this is what I got. This is what I have to watch. Is this is this uh, roll? Okay, um, with the, with the strikes at 1660. I, I need the market to go up a little bit in order for this to really max out. Say so if the market goes up 10 points, I get to that point. It doesn't have to get to that point because if I, let's say I bought this thing for 16 bucks a week ago. Let's say that between now and tomorrow, this, you know, all things being equal, nothing else changing, the roll here is going to increase. Okay, I and mean, it's going to go up to, you know, maybe seven bucks. Um, you know, it depends on where the stock is, right? If if the if the if the index goes right to 1660, this this roll is going to go to about 11 or 12 bucks, right? Huge difference. Even if it's right here, let's see if I sell this. If I if I roll this out for seven dollars by tomorrow, then I've cut the risk in my trade by more than half, right? Paid, six, paid 16 out, get seven back, that's not quite half, okay? But it's getting there. And then what do I do? I do it again the next week. Take it another seven, eight bucks, depends on what's going on, okay? But that's how, you know, I would start looking at this. Now, let's, let's just go see. Maybe I should just roll out to... Um, Two expirations, right? Okay. Now, and when I'm looking at it this way, remember this puts in the money, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep all of this time. This is not all time decay, right? You can look at the call. The call is going to give you the basically the same amount of time decay as as the put. All right. So here, if I sell out. If I roll out here, I'm going to collect eight bucks one week. Just looking at the ask, and I'm going to collect eight bucks on the second week. All things being equal, 
or I can roll out once and get 12 bucks. Well, that tells me right there. It does me no good to roll out two weeks right now because I'll get more money in theta by rolling out week to week to week. Okay? Now, of course, things change. There was a question about what if the market moves. Well, in the market moves, then there's a whole lot of other things you can do. But um, this, is, this is a pretty straightforward calendar. Uh, you know, week after week, you're selling that calendar to bring in money. You're bringing in that credit week after week after week, and that's what starts to make a really nice-looking income trade um, that has some fairly wide break-evens. Okay, you're, it's it's going to be very hard to get labeled on this thing, even if the market has a big move, right? Because you know, if the market has a big move, there's always there's always something up my sleeve, right? We can always roll here. We can. We can roll it there. There's plenty of things we can do. Okay, so there's not much more for me to do on this other than watch this. Watch this roll, guys. You know, keep this up on your screen. And as time passes, you're going to start to see this thing go, you know, higher and higher and higher. Assuming the market just doesn't do anything stupid. Okay. So anyway, that's a that's a quick look at the market. If uh, you know, if I didn't have if I didn't have this position on, I think putting on a calendar right now would would, would probably make some decent sense. Um, that question, of course, gets into uh, which option do I buy, which option do I sell in terms of expirations. And again, we could spend a lot of time um, making different tweaks to that because uh, there's so many subtleties that come into play. But generally speaking, you know, buy that shorter term. I wouldn't sell this one. I wouldn't sell the at the money here. Now, I don't know. Again, we'd have to we'd have to go into it. But again, I don't have uh, all the time that I'd like to. Um, we have to be courteous for the uh, for the other speakers here at Trading Club. But let me go back to um, let me go back to the slides here and just kind of finish up some thoughts. Okay, um, so we here's we went through the three keys to adjusting calendars. Okay, um, I'll tell you, these keys are probably more important than the initial setup. That's how important they are. Okay, you can spend all your time looking for the most the optimal option to buy and the optimal option to sell, and there you can get to that point, right? But if you if you can't manage it right, it doesn't really do you all that much good. Okay, now we don't just take a look. I'm kind of shifting gears here. We don't just take a look at at, at calendars. That was just today's topic. Okay, um, you know when when we're in the live trading that I do at Options Buzz, I, I I run a live trading room twice a week. Throughout the week, I'll send out ideas, and one of them was this GMCR butterfly. This was an earnings trade, okay? And this is a, an hour, maybe two hours before this butterfly closed. And I tell you, this thing was it was close to a home run, okay? But just like I said in number two, uh, number one, you don't want to let options go to expiration necessarily, okay? Because if if something happens in the last two hours, all of the profit from this butterfly can be lost. So I made one adjustment and I turned the butterfly into this. Isn't that cool? Basically, it's it's like a strangle, but it's all above. It's got locked in profit. And everybody, you know, what's the adjustment? What's the adjustment? Well, the adjustment was I bought a straddle. Okay, I bought a straddle. And the, the effect of doing that is it locked up all the profit and took all the risk out and gave the trade room to make more money. Okay, so again, it's not okay. It's not about understanding what a straddle is. It's understanding the application of these things that makes the most amount of sense. And I tell you guys, I love sharing the things that I've learned over the last 20 years. And uh, I tell you, people appreciate it. It's like, show me how this works. Show me how that works. And and we can do that um, in live trading. We you know we can't do that. Um, unfortunately, we just don't have the time today. So, if you want to subscribe to Options Buzz, okay, MarketFi um, it, it hosting my live trading rooms, okay, and like I said, here are some of the trades that we've gone over 
A lot of these were earnings trades. Um, one of the biggest things, like I said earlier, is learning when not to trade something, when, when to stay away. So the, the live trading room uh, occurs uh, twice every week on Mondays and Thursdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. And we go for, you know, we go for 60 to 90 minutes, okay? We look through live markets. Um, again, we look at why I would trade something, why I would not, what would be a good expiration to choose, and so on. Um, and they're all recorded in, uh, in HD, so you, if, even if you can't make the live trading room, you know, watch it when you come home from work, watch it on the weekend, um, whatever you want. Outside of the live trading room, Okay. Any if I find a new if I find if I find a new trade I'll send it out. Okay. It's it's emailed immediately, and we've added the capability for for receiving a text. I know a lot of you guys have, have asked, can you know can I receive these alerts via text? Now we can. We've listened and uh, we've come through with that for you. Okay. Um, any other thing that I do, if I adjust the trade, if I you know when I'm going to roll this calendar out, I'm going to let people know. And say here's the strikes, here's the price I'm looking at, and uh, all of these trades are sent out through the week and verified, um, verified by MarketFi. Sorry, okay, verified mar by MarketFi. And if you're not familiar with MarketFi, uh, here's what they do: uh, they've got the support 24/7. They check out all of the products that they have. They've checked out my options buzz live trading. They verify the results. And if you subscribe today, we're going to uh, throw in um, the electronic download of a, uh, a paper I wrote called the 90% trading system. Okay? And it, for every product, if, if you sign up, um, well, not just today, but if you sign up, you're going to get 30 days to try out my live trading. And if you don't like it at the end of 30 days, you get your money back. Okay? So all of these things... Um, are available to you guys for only 99 bucks a month, which I think is a steal. And like I said, we'll throw in that uh, uh, that electronic download of that paper I wrote. Uh, it's about 10 pages long, but it explains in a little more detail the idea of high probability trading and what you really uh, need to understand. Okay, so uh, I want to say um, a big thanks to Trading uh, Pub for having us. Uh, to uh, Morgan for hosting this. Um, what are we doing on timer? We've got like two or three minutes uh, for questions. So if you have questions, let me see what I can answer while we're still here. But again, um, uh, keeping, uh, you know, making sure that we're not over time for uh, for the next great speaker. Uh, let's see. Bill's question is: Is there any sort of auto trade? Um, not yet, Bill. Um, that's one thing that we want to look into. It's not as easy as you might think to get it going, but um, yeah, we will be looking into auto trade for uh, the trades that come out of the uh, out of the live trading. All right, let me roll back up here and see what other questions. Yeah, Ted. Yeah, there was some comment about the dividends. Um, the the time value of the call and the time value of the put of the same strike are, are going to be the same except they will be adjusted for interest rates and dividends, okay? Uh, Rich's question, how far out is the, uh, is the insurance option? Again, it's, not, it's, it's so, it's impossible for me to say this is the one best way to, to set up a calendar, right? It's, it's akin to saying, hey, you know, what's the best trade, okay? I don't know what the best trade is until, um, I look at the option chain. I see what the volatility is doing. Um, I see what the market's doing. You ask, you know, what's um, what do I think the volatility is going to do? There's so many things that go into answering the question, what's the best way to trade this? Okay? So there's never that one answer, here's the best way to trade it, other than saying you have to look at all the things that matter. Right? And that's, you know, that's for $99 a month. That's why it's a steal. For, you know, I love sitting down and tearing apart these trades and give you the reason why I think something might be the best. Um, if, if you want to do it yourself, then that's the, that's the, uh, the steps you have to go through. 
Question about, uh, I roll the shorter term, but what about rolling the longer term? Um, I, I guess you could. I guess you could. Um, there, I don't know why there would be any reason to. You can certainly roll the long option up or down um, to make adjustments as the market moves. Hey, Gary's question is, what is the, the yearly return? Go to, go to uh, Mark, go to that link, and you're going to see the updated, I don't even know what it is. I don't watch it. Um, it's like uh, Rich was saying. You know, you put the trade on uh, for the trade sake itself, not for the P&L. Um, you know, I, I, you go take a look. Roughly, I don't know, I wouldn't say maybe it's up 20%. That's, that, that's a guess, probably 15 to 20%. So anyway, um, down to one minute. Simon, do I run a delta neutral portfolio of calendars? Um, no. I mean, a calendar is a perfectly acceptable uh, income trade. It's part of a position. Somebody, somebody earlier was asking about a, managing a position. Well, that's what you do with a calendar. Once you put it on, it's going to start to acquire a delta. Market goes up, market goes down, it's going to acquire a delta. Okay? Um, managing that trade uh, just comes down to you know, the basic dollar risk management. You start looking at the um, the adjustments. You guys should know this. Well, I don't want to say you should know this. Okay, that was you. You can know this is that you can watch the option chain. Remember how many times I said the options chain will show you so much information if you know where to look. The options chain will tell you when is it time to roll out or to roll out and down, um, or how much more movement can I withstand before this time comes, okay? That, you know, that's the value of, of getting trained at Susquehanna and staring at, at options chains on the floor for nine years. Is, um, those things uh, become apparent, okay? So, all right, guys, I am not going to go over. Uh, I don't want to be uh, disrespectful to uh, Trading Pub for their generous offer of letting me speak here. I hope you guys have found this uh, useful. It's the whole point is can you walk away with something tangible from this and start putting it to work to start making, uh, uh, you know, start helping yourselves make money with these calendars? And I, I hope I've accomplished that. So I, I, sorry we can't get to all the questions, but thank you, everybody. Um, thank you to uh, Morgan, Trading Pub, and uh, click that button, guys. Check out Options Buzz. Uh, come see me in a live trading session, and uh, we'll talk to you all again real soon. All right, you guys have a great day. Good deal. Uh, thanks again, Greg. Awesome job for sure. Always like working with you and the guys over at Market Buy. Uh, I'll post that link one more time for 30 days access. And, and the cool thing with this is uh, with Market Buy products, you guys might not know this, but all the trades are verified. Uh, so they make sure that it's an actual trade uh, that you guys could be filled on and then they keep track of it. And then also they have a 30 day money back guarantee on everything. So if for some reason, you know, you, you know, spend 29 days with Greg and say, hey, this just isn't for me. Uh, you just let the guys know and they'll take care of you. But again, wanted to uh, thank you, Greg, for being here, being awesome and a uh, part of uh, today's event. And I uh, hope that you guys are enjoying it as much as well. So at this time, um, I'm going to turn things over to our next speaker. We